thousand talkers his tongues were all broken I saw guns and sharp swords in the hands of young children and it's a hard and it's a hard Hard rain is going to fall, Bob Dylan. Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Our guests are Gwyn Dyer. He's author of Climate Wars, The Fight for Survival as the World Overheats. And Vandana Shiva joins us, an Indian environmentalist, scientist, philosopher, global justice activist, and eco-feminist. A longtime critic of genetically modified crops and the system of corporate-driven agriculture and neoliberal globalization that's privatized natural resources and empowered farming in indigenous communities across the global south. Well, we're talking about geoengineering. You just came from giving a speech last night at uh, St. John the Divine. Um, what are your thoughts on geoengineering, Vandana Shiva? Well, uh, three thoughts. The first is, it is the idea of being able to engineer our lives on this very fragile and complex an interrelated and interconnected planet that's created the mess we are in. It's an engineering paradigm that created the fossil fuel age, that gave us climate change. And Einstein warned us and said, you can't solve problems with the same mindset that created them. Geoengineering is trying to solve the problems with the same old mindset of controlling nature. And the phrase that was used of cheating, let's cheat. You can't cheat nature. That's something people should recognize by now. Uh, there is no cheating possible. Eventually, the laws of Gaia determine the final outcome. But I think the second thing about geoengineering is we've just had the volcano in Iceland. Uh, in, uh, yes, it was Iceland. And look at the collapse of the economy. And here are scientists thinking that's a solution because they're thinking in a one-dimensional way. It's linear issue of global warming, anything to do global cooling. I work on ecological agriculture. We need that sunlight for photosynthesis. The geoengineers don't realize sunshine is not a curse on the planet. The sun is not the problem. The problem is the mess of pollution we are creating. So again, we can't cheat. And the final issue is that these shortcuts that are attempted from places of power, and I would add places of ignorance, of the ecological web of life, are then creating the war solution because geoengineering becomes war on a planetary scale with ignorance and blind spots, instead of taking the real path, which is helping communities adapt and become resilient. That's the work we do in India. We save the seeds that will be able to deal with sea level rise or cyclones so that we have salt tolerant varieties. We distributed them after the tsunami. Last year, we had a monsoon failure. But instead of sending armies out, we distributed seeds. And the farmers who had seeds of millets had a crop. The farmers who were waiting for the Green Revolution chemical cultivation had a crop failure. So building resilience and building adaptation is the human response. It's the ecological response. And we don't have to panic. The panic and fear is coming out of ignorance. I'd like to ask you about the uh, something you've talked about quite often, the global land grab that is going on around the world by countries fearing uh, the uh, scarcity in terms of their food products going out and grabbing other countries' lands. Could you talk about that? Well, you know, my last book, um, Soil Not Oil, I talk about the fact that, you know, the, the oil culture has given us climate change. And if we continue on that same paradigm, the only next step is eco-imperialism grab what remains of the resources of the poor and take it to create insularity and a false defense and security because the planet is interconnected, our lives are interconnected. The rich cannot isolate themselves in islands of defense against a planetary instability. Um, the other option is Earth democracy, as I talk about it. Now, those who have power, those who have money, and those who are dri driven by greed and injustice are now seeking to grab the lands of the poor. It's happening on a very large scale in Africa. It's happening in India. The World Bank is promoting it because there's this very false idea that large scale farms will help us with food security when all the data is showing smaller farms produce more food. So if you have to be food secure, you'd better be small. Diversified farms can deal with climate change much better because if one crop doesn't do well, some other crop will do fine. And the monoculture of large farms will be more vulnerable to climate collapse. 
And of course, the biggest issue is half the world farms. You can't rob them of their livelihoods. Forget the running out of water and climate wars related to water wars. You're going to have, you already are having in India as a result of the land grab, in this case more for mining and industry, what we are seeing is a war within. An Operation Green Hunt has been launched by the government in order to clean out the lands, to be able to grab the lands on behalf of corporations. We talked about the Kashmir crisis and the shootouts, but those scenes are taking place in every remote tribal area today. And that issue of war for resources, that as long as you are powerful, you have the right to grab anyone's resources and you have a right to use all kinds of illegitimate violence, that militarized mindset that I say comes from capitalist patriarchy is really at the root of so many of our problems, which is why we need to feel at home with nature and we need to recognize that the resources of the earth belong to all, have to be shared, and the land rights of the poor, defenseless, indigenous person and the peasant is the biggest peace in initiative of today and it's the biggest climate insurance of today. Gwyn Dyer, uh, define and defend geoengineering and tell us which governments are engaging in it. Well, first of all, Vandana and I agree about 95 percent. We agree about the problem, that there we, is yeah. a problem. Yeah, we agree about the problem, and um, I don't disagree with any of her solutions, but I don't think they're going to happen in time if we do not intervene directly as well to avoid a massive human dieback in population. We are heading for the brink very fast. But your solutions commit the planet to a massive dieback. I don't, I don't agree with you. What, what, holding the temperature down is an intervention. It's an intervention that's intended to be temporary. It wins you time to get your emissions down. The goal is still to get the emissions out. And many other goals that you and I would agree upon are attainable, but only with time. And we don't have the time. We are going to be, the last report out of the Hadley Center suggested on current track, we are four degrees Celsius hotter, average global temperature by 2060. It's only 50 yeah, years. But Gwen, every one of your solutions is further disrupting the web of life, which is the problem. The problem is not warming and cooling. We can survive. The planet can survive that. Oh, of course it can, yeah. but, but not, problem, not all of us. Not all of us. But the problem is the every, geoengineering is an experiment. It is not a solution. No. And you cannot experiment in such a violent way without full assessment of the impact. And as I said, just the simple thing of blocking the sun rays it's a problem for the planet. It's a problem talking, for humanity. You're talking 1%. I mean, you're talking about 1% no, of solar radiation. No, but iron filings, iron filings being like thrown iron. into the ocean. That's ridiculous. Or re reflectors in the sky or artificial volcanoes. But that's geoengineering. Every the, one of them, if, if the solution is looked at all its spin-offs in a full ecological way and a full social impact, or what does it mean? And the most okay. important thing is it's undemocratic. I think the crisis of the climate is so serious that people need to be involved. The problem of geoengineering or genetic engineering is a bunch of experts sitting with a bunch of corporations say, we'll decide on behalf of the no, people. No, no. That's part of the problem. Yeah. And that's why I really respect Eva Morales. Well, he I'm called the people of the world after the collapse of Copenhagen and said so the people of the world will decide the solution. Okay, the people of the world will not decide. You know that and I know that. This but is they not, are deciding. Uh, I haven't noticed yet. Well, there's um, a, a universal declaration on the rights of Mother Earth the, that came out of that amazing gathering that yeah. we need to shift to an Earth centered paradigm rather I'd than an arrogant this. narrow reductionist mechanistic science Do you know expert what will based happen? paradigm. Do you know what will happen? I just want to interrupt yeah. for a second to say, Gwyn Dyer, if you can explain, I don't even think pe most people understand what geoengineering okay. is. Geoengineering is short-term interventions to avoid a climate runaway disaster in order to give us more time to get our emissions down which in themselves will cause a runaway climate disaster if we uh, simply allow them to go ahead. Without geoengineering, you hit that disaster in less than 50 years. Um, and you probably need more than 50 years to get your emissions down. Now, first of all, obviously, you've got to do the experiments. You've got to figure out, are there horrendous side effects you don't want to do? Um, but if you don't do this, you know who dies first. It's the people in the tropics and the subtropics. Not up here. 
We watch you die on television. Can I ask you, in terms of uh, geoengineering, what uh, companies or what uh, governments are now promoting this as a, as a potential solution? We still don't have any official government co uh, commitment to it anywhere. What and companies are investing in uh, it and developing companies it? Companies are investing in a couple of markets.